All right, we're recording. We're going to go through problem 2.13, which uh, some of you decided to do and some of you did not. I presume that means the rest of you can do it very quickly. Um, we're going to try doing this one more time here uh, using the tools as exist in Microsoft PowerPoint. And I'm going to point out the problem as is shown 2.13 is probably one of those that like many are, are most easily solved literally by um, algebra and by some logic and what I want to go through this one for is I really want to point out how important it is to really think about anytime you have concurrent forces they'll always think about them as tension pulling away in other words don't lose sense of the the uh, direction so I'm going to point out at that point that is the top of the tower, there is a force going this way that has a given direction, a force that's going this way that has a given direction, and a force that's going this way that has a given direction. This force has a known magnitude of 8 kips, I believe, and it has a known direction of those theta there is equal to 315 degrees because you have to once again look at the geometry so 315 now these two forces tension 1 equals tension 2 and that becomes the key to this problem but if you look at tension 1 if you call tension 1 the I guess the one going down uh, more directly to the ground, its direction, theta, is equal to, call that tension 1 here, tension 1. Theta is equal to, well, it's going to be 180 plus 60 or 240. And if you call this tension 2, tension 2, theta, is equal to, well, that's 210. And then you just write out, knowing the sum of the forces in the x equals 0, you can know that that's true because of the sum of the forces in the x at some concurrent point is equal to 0. That concurrent point being the top of the tower. I'm not going to forget, of course, my x and y and then my positive moment here. Some of the forces in the x is going to be equal to 8 times the cosine of 315 plus t times the cosine of 240 plus t times the cosine of 210. And just in that, um, we have the solution. Now I'm going to point out, I'm not going to redo this, but thinking through that, we have to remember that in this case, there was actually another force, if you would, if we're thinking of it this way, trying to find this there's another force here going up, the force in the pole. But that would not have any x component. So if you know that these the sum of the forces in the x is equal to 0, you can then solve for t here. And I'm going to go through a bit of the algebra just so you can see you would have to basically take t on the outside would be equal to a minus 8 times the cosine of 315 divided by cosine of 240 plus the cosine of 210. And that would be the algebra that would solve for the tension. It should be positive because you know it's got to be tension, and you get a solution there. 
All right. Now, graphically, I'm going to go through this quickly here and see if I can. And this is the one that doesn't necessarily solve itself graphically as easily as you would, but that general sense that if this is your tower here, it's going to be subjected to force is this way and this way and this way. Now, if you draw a zero point over here and now do that kind of, this is the more or less the star diagram. And if you really think about it, the star diagram also has that kind of force up there, which is the force of the pole. Now, if you think about adding the forces up, you can add the known direction of eight. So that is eight. And this has to get back down to here. It has to get back down to here with uh, with two forces that are traveling along these known directions, right, that are the same. So in, in essence, you solve that by kind of swinging a bunch of circles, right? And as you swing this circle down, you, you know, that circle there, and then a bigger circle, and then eventually you'll get to a point where this runs like that. Now, I'll do that again, but the, 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 the solution becomes basically swinging a couple of circles out a circle that slides down here, right, and a circle that goes there, and then eventually they will intersect someplace along there where you have this known direction here and this known direction up here. And um, the reality is if you have these two known directions, it's either circles or you're just sliding basically up until you get this point where this equals that. So the idea of graphically, this one solves itself more easily graphically than not. Uh, and I'll go ahead and punch this and hope it's okay. I got my calculator out here. I hope you can do calculator punches, but the cosine of 315 should be a positive number, right? And times 8. And so that gives you a number in the top here of 5.66, if you would. So this is equal to minus, trying to get this thing to work here, equals minus 5.66. Because the cosine is positive. Now this on the bottom is better turn out to be a, a uh, negative number. So the cosine of 240 and the cosine of 210 are both going to be negative. So we're going to take two. I'm hitting a clear button here, the cosine of 240, closing it up, plus the cosine of 210, closing it up, gets you a minus 1.36, which means our tension is equal to 5.66 divided by 1.36 in the order of 4.16 kips. 4.16 kips or kilonewtons, whatever the case would be. I don't have it in front of me. I guess it's it's K as we show her. Be, I presume it's kips or maybe it's kilonewtons, but make sure you're um, specific on that. And it is intention which means each of these circles here are going to be 4.16 kips. So 4.16, 4.14, that's the solution to 2.13. Um, realistically, I want to point out that this is probably most easily solved um, by algebra. And we have to realize that very often we're going to have to look for these links where something that's not just obviously the sum of the forces in the x, the sum of the forces in the y equals 0. In this case, we had another given thing in the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and print this, and hopefully this uh, will serve as a solution for those of you who uh, didn't do it or those who did and still had a question on it. I will do it graphically, I believe, in Geometer Sketchpad. Thanks for listening.